stand. Um, hello, hello. Pardon? Mariam? Um, yeah, she's, uh, she's, she, oh, she's over there. Uh. And we have one additional uh, speaker for this panel, hello, Shika, hello. but I will let everyone introduce themselves. Hello, this one? Hello, can people hear me? Okay, all right, all right, all right, okay. Um, very excited for the panel today after a wonder, wonderful day. Here to learn, my name is Anthony McGuire. I work at New Street. We're building a media and data brand around cultural assets. That means things like NFTs, sneakers, Pokemon cards. But really, who we should be celebrating today are the panelists, the experts in this space. So I'd love to have each of them introduce themselves, starting with Marion, please. Hello. Thanks, Anthony. Sure. Um, so I'm the co-founder of CrowdMuse, um, and we're building a protocol on the Polygon blockchain, which empowers uh, fashion designers, brands, to collaborate on digital collections on chain. Uh, which basically enables um, co-ownership models and incentive models to be pretty transparent and enabling true product provenance um, of that product supply chain. Yay! Yeah. Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Pauline, I'm the co-founder of Unique Labs, and we are building a lifestyle, fashion and lifestyle metaverse for digital identity creation, so we allow everyone to create their own digital identity beyond avatars. And um, some other interesting news, we are building something for Art Basel Miami. Um, we're conducting product research, so I invite everyone to get in touch with us and contribute if you like. And then we also kick off our podcast, um, our second season, our podcast in two weeks. So get in touch if you would like to know more. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anastasia. I work at DressX as a marketing lead. Um, and DressX, as you may uh, know, is a meta closet for digital fashion, for uh, fashion NFT assets, and for AR looks. We see DressX as this ultimate destination for anyone, uh, basically, who would want to enter the metaverse. Uh, we support 3D designers, young 3D designers. We also work with established brands. We work with big companies like um, Farfetch, Google, uh, recently Coca-Cola. So um, yeah, basically enabling anyone who wants to um, join the metaverse and thrive there. Hi, I'm the new panelist. <laughs> My name is Shika. I'm the founder of Front Row, which is a rental platform. So we specialize in renting out designer clothing and accessories. So everything from Ellie Saab to Chanel to Ralph and Russo. We are looking to expand into this space and incorporate some digitizing of our pieces and looking into applications in which people can rent things physically in the physical world and in the meta world. Great. Now, I'd love to start off by talking about the topic of uh, digital identity, which has come up many times today, because I think digital identity also is really an analog for digital desire, which also leads to digital commerce, right? Now, we've seen, particularly amongst younger audiences, that people are spending billions of dollars on digital skins, digital items, and games. And as we look to the future, will that expand to things like digital fashion? Now, for us personally, I'm sure we all have our own perspectives on what digital identity means to us. Does that have a desire? What do we want to build? What do we want to buy in the digital space? So maybe, starting with Pauline, could we talk about what your thoughts are on digital identity and digital desire? Sure. So digital identity has always played a huge role, and representing ourselves, IRL, is um, really important, but it's, always, it's almost more important to actually represent yourself in digital spaces because we almost spend more time in digital spaces and meet more people in digital spaces, so we obviously need to carry our personality over to these spaces or create a new one if we want to. And one topic that's particularly interesting about digital identity is actually um, making it interoperable in digital worlds. So that's one of the big topics I think that many brands, including us, are looking to tackle at the moment. So how do we bring our personality to platforms and how do we actually carry it over to other platforms as well um, without losing any visual or contextual quality, so to say. Can I jump in here? Yeah, sure. um, <clears throat> I think for like setting a bit of context for on like digital identities, I think a digital ident identity is essentially saying like you can prove yourself without physical documentations and essentially traditionally um, identity online has been basically um, 
within like centralized databases and controlled by authorities and third party sources and so on and so you know we don't own any of that ID, uh, ID or data that we put out there um, and so you have this kind of new emergence of decentralized IDs or DIDs which are essentially I, you know, identifiers that sit across decentralized databases for example on public blockchains like Ethereum and so you can then actually every individual is holding and controlling that ID um, and you have obviously you know dot eth addresses and so on that is associated with a wallet that is also associated with proof of work and also associated with the reputation that you build on chain and so from from a, i don't know from my perspective from a web3 perspective um i think digital identity is really interesting because uh, your did can just really link to uh the reputation you're doing and also the products and projects that you're creating on chain um, and so it becomes this kind of like intersection between what you are doing in the physical and also how that then is attributed to the digital. Uh, and that's really exciting. So if digital identity is becoming more and more important from the lens of like e-common retail as, as the, the panel's about, let's say, I don't know, I spend a hundred pounds a month on clothes. And as time goes on, maybe my digital identity matters more to me two years from now than it does today. So let's say the, the hundred pounds of clothes do you think we're gonna enter a world where 90% of that 100 pounds will be spent on digital items? Do you think we'll be increasing the amount of money we spend on other things? Like, just trying to think from an e-commerce retail perspective, if digital identity matters more, how does that affect our spending habits moving forward? Just to quickly add on the previous question as yeah, well. Sure. Um, so in terms of digital identity uh, addresses, we think that it's obviously not a new concept. We had our digital identity in gaming before, but what we usually say is that um, now with social media, with all of the Skype calls and um, everything just kind of swiftly moving to the digital space, we think that we all are becoming avatars of ourselves uh, on our social media. So uh, we're kind of building our new profile uh, on social media and it doesn't necessarily like 100% matches our actual personality. So what we're doing at DressX is we are um, that we are enabling um, just general audience to try digital fashion on and experiment a bit more uh, with their digital identity, even though it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, an avatar or something like that. It, it can be their own picture um, and they, then they can create some, something um, more kind of of a metaverse scale uh, on their social media. But um, yeah, about this question, actually we are working on our research and we are trying to figure out if uh, buying things in the digital space actually influences our purchases behavior in the physical life, because um, the whole idea was uh, based on the sustainability issues, and we figured out that 9% of people only buy physical fashion to post a picture on social media. We wanted to change that, um, and we wanted to provide them the new alternative for buying trendy fashion clothes in digital and then being more mindful in the physical world we still have a long way to actually figure out how it works in terms of numbers, but we are very hopeful that um, that's, that's what's going to happen. Again, just adding to your previous point, when I started Front Row four years ago, it was a platform that allowed people to experiment because they're not committing to buying a piece. So you can, re you can experiment with the rental platform, expand your horizons, figure out what styles suit you, what don't, Ex expand your horizons with new designers as well. And I think with the digital world, you're, you're able to do that even further. So what we want to do is incorporate the application of renting it in the digital world, but also receiving it in, real, in the real world as well. Yeah, I think the, because I've been in sustainable fashion for a really long time. My first company was in sustainable fashion about 10 years ago. And um, sadly, it's no longer around, but like um, it, it, the, the, the space has evolved and I really th feel like we should give some uh, like credit to consumers because consumers are now actually demanding much more um, slow fashion produce actually that is using much more sustainable materials or like methods in which that material was sourced. So upcycled, recycled, etc. And it's becoming much more accessible. It's just that um, still there is this uh, there is this limitation for designers, I feel, and, and brands that are up against maybe funding uh, barriers or legal barriers to have access to these, you know, suppliers of sorts. Um, but I think the consumer type is really pushing that thing forward. And then now you're starting to see 
lots of like uh, pockets of micro factories uh, that are coming into emergence, like a ton in Portugal, a ton in Europe, across like the global south, and designers are wanting access to that. So I think if you are creating a a digital narrative and a digital narrative that is tied into a product that you are ensuring is utilizing sustainability, then you're already like immer immersing that experience into the market or like enabling that to expand into the market. And it's kind of already happening. We just need to give people the right tools to make sure that happens. Sustainability is something that I feel everybody here has been talking about throughout the day and each of your companies has some level of focus on. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, what are the advantages, the disadvantages, and if a company isn't valuing sustainability, is that a business disadvantage for them? So how, from your perspective, how has it been a focus for each of your companies, and is there a downside when a company doesn't focus on it as much? Okay, I can go. So in terms of sustainability, I think that's a huge downside if your company doesn't um, really do anything of that sort at all, like doesn't address problems that exist because there's enough research that shows that consumers are looking for that. Now, if the actual buying decision is influenced by that, I think that's another story, oftentimes, because research also showed that there's actually a difference between what consumers say versus what they do, because of how you want to be perceived, and um, you don't want to look like you don't care about sustainability, meaning you don't care about the planet. Um, but so for ourselves, in terms of sustainability, what we're trying to do is Obviously, we're digital natives, so um, we don't have any physical products just yet. Um, but we are looking at sustainability also from a people perspective. So we're trying to build for a really wide audience and try to make it accessible for as many people as possible so that um, all types of user groups of different abilities are actually included in the process and can use the platform that we're building. I was on the DressX website earlier, and I saw in bold letters, DressX is, is carbon neutral. I don't know if you wrote that personally, but I had imagined that that's something that the company wants to be proud of and put at the forefront. And then I think it talked about using Flow blockchain. How, how has that been part of the decision making of the company, I guess for everybody else's company as well, but starting off with DressX? Yeah, as I mentioned, basically um, the main idea behind DressX was actually um, the sustainability issue of the fashion industry and how we can kind of uh, modernize it and how we can allow people to have uh, an alternative for their uh, sometimes toxic uh, fashion and purchase decisions and behaviors. Um, we've been, it's, it's so um, connected to kind of every step DressX is taking because um, we launched our, we keep on launching our uh, sustainability research every half a year. Uh, we usually send questionnaires to our um, users just to understand how actually buying uh, digital fashion affects their purchasing behaviors. As Pauline mentioned, um, it's not um, usually what they actually do, but we are really trying to kind of see the numbers behind it and understand if it actually uh, affects their decisions. We launched our NFT platform in February with Ethereum, but now we incorporate Polygon as well because we want to be uh, more sustainable. We are uh, working with Carbon Flow and uh, yeah, basically even every designer that is getting, 3D designer that is getting onboarded uh, on DressX, when they uh, fulfill their first questionnaire about their collection and they tell us kind of what was the idea behind it, they also need to fill all of the details about their um, technology, about their laptops, about uh, the network they're using, just so we can also count basically all of the um, sustainability impact DressX produces as a company, because for us it's, it's really important to be transparent here and understand what we can do to, uh, to make it better. And I think, um, yeah, any company, basically no company can now exist without um, actually thinking about that. I think sustainability is a core part of any business today because COVID gave rise to the conscious consumer. And we started, I started Front Row four years ago I will be honest, I don't think sustainability was the main motivation for a lot of our customers coming to us. It came down to our curation um, because people can get an Ellie Saab dress for a fraction of the price and, and without the commitment. I think, honestly, the rental model came under a lot of scrutiny last year because though we market ourselves as being sustainable, they're so operationally heavy. You've got the dry cleaning, you've got the carbon emissions from the logistics. So I think it was a process of educating customers on the rental side of things, but I think if we can incorporate the digital side and aspect and do that in a sustainable way, we're gonna be making leaps and bounds. 
Yeah, um, it's an interesting one because like I went to the um, Future Fashion um, Expo, Future Fabrics um, Expo in London a couple of months ago. And um, and it's funny because in Web3, there's like, you know, we, we say like GM regens or whatever. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, I thought it was only us a lot that talk about regenerative. And then I went in there and I was like, oh, all oh, these guys are also saying regenerative fashion now. And that before it was sustainable fashion. Um, and really, that's an interesting concept because if you look at consumer model types, um, they've you know, there's there is like the sustainable model type and then there's now the regenerative. And the regenerative is basically saying, um, ensure that not only the creators or the makers, brands, whatever, suppliers, and also the community, the buyers, are actually um, re uh, getting regenerative incentives from the purchase of that physical product that is redeemable via, via an NFT. And so essentially what an NFT does, which basically acts like a royalty scheme, like you see Royal with music NFTs, and you see artifact with the digital NFT side of things are basically saying when you purchase this, uh, the revenue split across um, that NFT is being put back into every single contributor that contributed to that product creation. And that's regenerative, right? And uh, um, once that incentive becomes very clear and it becomes very visible, um, that's when it starts making some of the models for a lot of protocols, a lot of like, you know, other platforms uh, much more interesting. And then it also brings a lot of, you know, buyers in. So th that's the, I guess, to answer your question, <laughs> um, I guess the regenerative model is the way we see this working to ensure that we're working with sustainable materials, but ensuring that there is a co-ownership. And obviously Patagonia just came out the other day saying, you know, what they're trying to do is essentially, they're not giving the company away. They're basically saying that we want to ensure that every single employee, every single community member is a part owner into Patagonia. And that's, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> and, and that's the kind of thing that makes me want to buy Patagonia versus another brand, right? So it's not just like cool thing, but it would make my purchase decision influenced by that. Uh, now, I think also about a topic, if we're going to see a world where more and more fashion brands are coming out, digital, digital, physical, I mean, all, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's going to be a lot of new fashion brands, which is great. Now, this topic I hear a lot being talked about is, is interoperability. Now, it sounds like a boring word, but really the way I try to boil it down is like, where do you buy something and where do you wear it, right? Traditionally, I'd buy something from a store, maybe online, and I'd wear it on the street. Maybe I'd flex it on Instagram. But as time goes on, if I'm minting NFTs, I'm wearing them using AR filters. If I'm going to different metaverse experiences online, um, wearing them in very specific contexts, it can be kind of confusing and I don't know if I can wear everything where I want it to be. So this topic of interoperability boiled down to where to buy and where to wear. Does anybody have thoughts on how that will evolve like five years from now? Yeah, so we actually have quite a few ideas on how this could evolve and where it can lead us. And the most exciting thing that we envision is that you buy something digital, like maybe an AR piece of clothing and, um, sorry, I would say a VR piece of clothing for your digital avatar and you buy it somewhere and you just take it to whatever platform you want it and you just you can use it everywhere obviously there are some <laughs> concerns when it comes to the visual quality of different platforms so we're actually looking to create some sort of interoperability between platforms that actually allow for the quality that digital fashion requires um, looking at for example some pieces of dress x <laughs> you don't want to see them in sandbox for sure um, <laughs> i mean could be, but like, I agree. <laughs> it, it takes away from the quality and it just yeah. makes it less of a fashionable aspect, I would say. And so we are building or we're looking to build like a um, community of um, platforms um, that come up with like a standard that is followed in order to be interoperable. And we're actually working with a big technology company that um, works in that space. So we're going to come up with something in that space soon. and. Um, we invite everyone to also like check our socials because there's going to be something coming. Um, but yeah, like making it interoperable so that what you actually buy, you can use. Mm -hmm. Because why why would you buy something if you can't use it in different places? Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't buy a T-shirt that you can only wear to one event exactly once yeah. a month. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. or, or you could, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you have. Maybe the you want to. Yeah, yeah if you have the resources. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's getting kind of complicated, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Anastasia, would you like to add to Yeah, this? yeah. Um, so, basically, when we launched the DressX app, uh, that was our main intention, and we called the DressX app DressX Meta Closet, just because uh, what we are building uh, is we are trying to 
provide users the same experience as they have with their physical wardrobe. Uh, whenever you buy the piece and you can um, basically wear it whenever you want or uh, not wear it or keep it in your closet or whatever. Um, so whenever you buy something on DressX, um, you are getting this ability to wear it in AR. You can dress your own photo in it and depending on the uh, for example, NFT item that you are buying. Sometimes you can also take it to Decentraland, to Roblox. Uh, we are partnering with lots of different fashion platforms to actually um, enable this this closet, uh, meta closet experience for people. Because um, unless you can reuse the asset, um, it's not really that valuable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's that's basically our main um, thing that we are trying to develop over the next year or couple of years. I mean, on uh, the interoperability stuff is quite it's quite vast, it's quite broad as well because um, for, f um, I, well interoperability. I, when you first asked that question, I thought you were talking about chains, like um, like a multi-chain approach, but like uh, which is also an issue because that still needs to be interoperable. Um, and what I mean by that is that you have an array of different blockchains and you want to make sure that that NFT can travel across these blockchains and can be minted across block um, across blockchains uh, or protocols um, and I guess from our from our experience because we're what was I saying before the we're the digital layer to your meta layer, metaverse layer yeah. what was that? oh it's your gravity digital, layer yeah. um, sorry inside joke why did I say that uh, but essentially because we're looking at it from the digital perspective um, we're trying to ensure that um, we're working with digital designers that are you know essentially trying to get their avatars or the, the creation of the outfits within multiverses to also ensure that maybe some of those collections can also be redeemable in the physical, well, in a physical sense via this kind of, um, via this experience. And, and um, uh, a good example is, is Avatar obviously is launching their product, um, the black t-shirt drop on the 22nd of October, which will be happening on Crowdmuse. And it's saying, you know, it's got a storyline behind the you know, interoperability of the, the, the brand itself across multiverses that they're working with and also the digital experience that it could come with. So that's pretty sick. Uh, you know, when I, when I got on this panel, I was worried that I wouldn't have enough questions, but now we're running out of time and I have like 20 more. So I'm gonna <laughs> close with this question, kind of open-ended. And it starts with an observation that I've met, I haven't met everybody today, but I've met a, a good amount of people. And a lot of people say that they're here to learn. And you know, we've heard from different people at, at schools who've spoken, talking about different collectives, people creating educational courses. Now, uh, maybe starting with you, Shika, I'd love to know, to learn, if I was a young designer right now, 16 years old, a creative, an artist, uh, anyone who wants to get involved in this sort of broad digital fashion world that we're talking about today, what would be your message to them? And also maybe what's missing from an education perspective? I will put both of my hands up. I mentioned earlier that I, I didn't realize, I didn't think I had a place on this panel because we are looking to learn and actually I've learned so much from, from all of you sitting here and there's a long way to go with Front Row. I think it is overwhelming and I just wish there were, there were more uh, events like this or more ways in which you could immerse yourself. I was very lucky, Ashimi crossed my path through Front Row. Um, but I do wish that there was just a little bit more Awareness, I know last year when people, you know, there was that huge NFT run. I just mm. don't think, and then of course people may, may not have been as confident. I definitely invested, lost a lot of money. I've lost my sentiment, but it's hard to get back on the bandwagon. And I think just meeting, networking as much as you can, immersing yourself in these experiences, there's a long way to go. And I think exactly what we've done at Front Row, we're educating people and just trying to help as many people as possible. Yeah. Actually, Marion, at the end of this chat, and you tell <laughs> oh yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Love. Maybe just closing thoughts on that topic, or any broadly as we go. Maybe each the last people right now. Yeah, it was actually really interesting to listen to people on the previous panel. Um, uh, specifically, Steffi mentioned that there are some courses that uh, universities are launching right now for digital fashion education, which is really helpful. Um, it's actually really interesting that there are lots of resources available right now on the internet. Uh, that can help people to learn and actually as a platform we usually also learn from the creators because um th the space evolves so fast that you can kind of uh, learn from people who are heads on uh, experiencing the whole thing and and can bring their perspective to us um so we are kind of very close to our creators and we are tr always trying to give them a word we also partnered with um, a small one of the uh, biggest fashion schools in paris and we will be launching our course with them as well to kind of 
um, take all of our uh, knowledge together and, and help maybe the community to learn about that. But uh, yeah, as the space is evolving, um, it's kind of, it probably is much forward, like more forward than kind of education here. So we need yeah. to speed up the education um, direction as well and maybe help people to um, enter the space. But uh, it's crazy to see how younger generations are actually learning um, everything themselves and can sometimes teach us more than, than we can teach them even. Um, really good points. Um, <laughs> in the, um, so to add on that, um, in order to say relevant for young designers, I would say um, you need to know the basics of 3D fashion design nowadays. And looking back, back at my own um, like background at university, I studied um, fashion management. I was always looking at the fashion designers, like the other students that were doing fashion design, lots of handcrafting and cool things. There was nothing, oh, okay, there was some digital aspects, but there was nothing with like 3D design, 3D animation that these people learned. So I think that would be a really good point to start. And of course, more events like these. Thank you, Shumi, for making yeah. this possible. And um, then in terms of our platform, we're actually partnering with um, fashion schools as well, because our platform should enable people to build their own digital identity, which also includes their skills and their personality. So we want people to be able to express what they already, what they can do, what they um, professionally have achieved, for example. And yeah, we want to make it easier for digital fashion designers to join the space okay. by partnering with fashion. And last word. I'll just do some quick shilling for other people's projects, because I think there's like multiple like different things going on. And like, it really depends on what your interest is. And I think like, you do have Web3, Web3 is really massive. So like decide where it is that you're interested in. I think like from a DAO perspective, you can just join any DAO, Red DAO, ArtSec DAO, our DAO, <laughs> in order to contribute to a certain like goal that you believe in and the community that you want to be amongst. And and also just build and do cool projects. Like you got Slow Crypto over there, like shout out Tom, doing his thing over there. Like that's fucking awesome. That's basically, we're basically coding that shit in. Yeah, be like get your ETH uh, wallet address in there and do that because that's pretty awesome like there's so many things you can do so i think um uh yeah just get involved and build and yeah come chat to me afterwards if you want thank you very much everyone <laughs>